At 2.11 this morning, one of history's most dangerous typhoons locked onto the Philippines, just days after the last disaster. Super Typhoon Feng Wang is unleashing winds over 215 kilometers per hour, a 300 kilometer wide storm wall, and more than 100,000 people are racing for shelter. That's not all. Tsunami alarms sound and panic spreads, but the real danger may be something few people understand. What is fueling this crisis? And who is truly at risk now? Extreme winds are tearing across the eastern Philippines at 215 kilometers per hour, with gusts even higher in the core. The storm wind field stretches outward for 300 kilometers, an area wider than the distance from Manila to Legazpi, placing millions in the path of dangerous flying debris and collapsing structures. Rainfall is already intense, with over 200 millimeters recorded in some Bicol and eastern Visayas towns in just the last 12 hours. Forecasters warn that the next 24 to 48 hours could bring another 200 to 400 millimeters, overwhelming riverbanks and low-lying neighborhoods. As of 0800 UTC, the center of Feng Guang sits 415 kilometers east of Manila, moving west-northwest at 33 kilometers per hour. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center and Pagasa both confirm the storm's core is tightening, with pressure readings below 920 hectopascals. These numbers mean the risk to roofs, shanties, and power lines is extreme, especially in places where repairs from the last typhoon are unfinished. Shelters are filling fast. Evacuation orders have sent more than 100,000 people to shelters in Catanduanes, Albay, Sorsogon, Samar, and Leyte. In some barangays, families crowd into classrooms, clutching plastic tubs of belongings, while others nail down roof sheets and wait, hoping to ride out the worst. Local officials describe a race against time. Every hour lost means more people stranded as roads flood and bridges become impassable. Power, water, and emergency access can fail quickly when rivers rise and coastal roads wash out. Pagasa's lead forecaster put it this way, back-to-back -back storms mean rainfall, flooding, and landslide risk is much higher than usual. Even strong houses may not hold if the wind keeps rising. Every data point now points to a storm with the power to upend daily life. The numbers on the dashboard are not just statistics, they are the measure of risk for every family in the zone. As the wind field expands and the rain intensifies, the focus shifts from forecasts to the choices people make in the hours ahead. In the hours before landfall, the ground across much of the eastern Philippines is already waterlogged. Pagasa's latest hydrology bulletins confirm that soils in Leyte, Southern Leyte, Sorsogon, Albay, and Camarines Sur have absorbed so much rain from the last storm and Feng Wang's outer bands that they now exceed official landslide thresholds. In these provinces, even a brief burst of heavy rain can send hillsides crashing down or rivers spilling over their banks. Mayorga and Bay Bay in Leyte, Irosin and Daraga in Bicol, and Tandag City in Surigao del Sur are all under active flood and landslide advisories as of 11 o'clock this morning. The science is simple and unforgiving. When soils reach saturation, every additional drop runs off the surface instead of soaking in. This sudden runoff surges downhill, filling streams and rivers at dangerous speed. Mountain roads and river valleys become high-risk zones. In the tropics, once 100 to 200 millimeters of rain falls on already wet ground, landslides can happen with little warning. With Feng Wang forecast to bring another 200 to 400 millimeters in the next 24 to 48 hours, the danger is not just theoretical, it is immediate and real for anyone in these high alert areas. Warm sea surface temperatures in the Philippine Sea are currently one to two degrees above normal, according to NOAA's latest anomaly charts. That extra ocean heat has given Feng Wang more energy to pull moisture from the sea and dump it inland. That means heavier rain, longer downpours, and a higher chance of flash flooding. Structural weak points only add to the risk. Drainage systems in Bicol and eastern Visayas are still clogged or damaged from the last typhoon. Dikes flagged for urgent repair in Albay and Bacacay remain incomplete. With every hour of pounding rain, these fragile defenses face greater strain. 
For families living near riverbanks, slopes, or unfinished seawalls, the coming hours may bring their greatest test yet. A slight westward shift in Feng Wang's core now threatens the country's main power arteries. The National Grid Corporation of the Philippines moved rapid repair teams into staging zones across Bicol and eastern Visayas. Their main concern is transmission towers in Leyte and northern Samar, already weakened by the last storm, that may not withstand another round of extreme winds and pounding rain. If even a few towers topple, the backbone grid could fracture plunging entire provinces into darkness for two to five days, specific days. Hospitals and government centers can switch to emergency generators, but most homes and small clinics will face hours, if not days, without electricity. The risk extends beyond lights out. Water pumps, mobile networks, and ATMs all depend on steady power. In Tacloban and Ketterman, local officials have prepared to ration fuel and warned that water supply interruptions could hit within 12 hours of a blackout. Radar technicians flagged a stationary rain band over the Bicol Leyte transmission corridor for more than three hours, a red flag in typhoon operations. When a rain band stalls over a grid corridor, relentless rainfall and wind hammer the same stretch of infrastructure. This pattern, confirmed by Pagasa's Diet and Catterman radar loops, signals the storm's movement may be slowing, raising the risk of both prolonged flooding and grid collapse. When the radar echoes stop advancing, responders brace for the possibility that restoration will take longer, as access roads can flood and debris piles up around downed towers. An NDRRMC operations officer summed up the situation in a morning briefing. If the main line goes down, it is not just a blackout. It is water, fuel, and communications, all at risk, all at once. Chain reaction. From a single grid failure can ripple outward. Food deliveries stall as refrigerated trucks sit idle. Pharmacies close when point-of-sale systems fail. With a typhoon this strong, the difference between a near miss and a direct hit can be measured in hours of darkness and days without basic services. For families already coping with flooded roads and crowded shelters, every minute of lost power deepens the hardship. Storm surge is now the most urgent threat along the eastern bays. Pagasa's latest surge guidance warned seawater could rise two to three and a half meters above normal in low-lying barangays from Leyte Gulf to Lehman Bay. For coastal towns like Tacloban, Legazpi, and Palilo, entire neighborhoods could be swept away if the peak surge arrives at high tide. According to Pagasa tide tables, the next high tide from Manila Bay is expected at 2.13 a.m. local time. Surge on top of a high tide is when the risk of deep inland flooding is highest. Storm surge is not the same as a tsunami, Surge builds gradually as the typhoon pushes water ashore. A tsunami is a series of fast, powerful waves caused by an undersea earthquake or a landslide. Typhoons by themselves do not create tsunamis. As of 8.30 UTC, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center in Fivolks confirmed there is no tsunami watch or warning for the Philippines. Their criteria require a strong offshore earthquake or verified abnormal sea level change. Typhoon Feng Wang, no matter how intense, cannot create a tectonic tsunami. False alarms can spread fast online. Sirens may sound for storm surge, but official tsunami alerts will only come from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, Fivolks, or Pagasa. As a Fivolks media officer said, we have seen social media panic before. It spreads fastest when people are already afraid and exhausted from the last disaster. To stay safe over the next 24 to 72 hours, watch for these red flags. The typhoon stalls or slows near the coast. Rain bands keep pounding the same province. Surge forecasts climb above two meters, or the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, or FIVOLKS, issue an official tsunami or unusual waves bulletin. Green flags include the system speeding away from land, forecast winds and surge being downgraded, and rivers or reservoirs beginning to recede. For any sudden alarms or rumors, always check the latest bulletins from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, Fivolks, and Pagasa. These are the authorities that matter when seconds count. Right now, the Philippines faces storms that are growing fiercer and more frequent. Driven by warming oceans and rising seas, says the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, 2024. Each decision to prepare, evacuate, or rebuild shapes how many lives will endure the next one. In a world of extremes, readiness is not an option. It is survival.